If you notice a stain on your deck, there's an easy way to clean this up and get your deck looking fresh again. Be sure to act quickly so the stain doesn't have a chance to set in. For common stains like oil, grease, wine, dirt, and mess left from birds, we recommend cleaning it up as much as possible with a soft broom first. Then apply a mixture of detergent with warm water or sugar soap for a better result. Scrub the area with a sponge, then use a hard bristled broom to get rid of the rest. If the stain is extra tough, you can use a high pressure gurney. Just make sure you're at least 30 centimeters away from the deck when spraying, or you could cause damage. For rust, we recommend using oxalic acid mixed with warm water instead of sugar soap. For extra heavy grease and oil stains, check with your local hardware store for sodium carbonate solutions specific for that stain type. You should try to dry sweep your deck weekly and sponge wash your deck periodically throughout the year with a mixture of household detergent and warm water. We also recommend using barbecue mats for extra protection. Mold is a naturally occurring living organism that may develop on any material exposed to moisture. Composite decking in comparison to timber decking is much less impacted by mold as it only sits on the surface and doesn't penetrate down into the material like timber. Molds can appear anywhere. It is critical to understand your environment and assess the possibility for excess moisture, inadequate ground clearance and limited sunlight exposure before building your deck. Mold discoloration can sometimes look like this, this, or this. If you've noticed mold developing on your deck, take action immediately. Firstly, apply a mixture of warm water and household detergent with a sponge. Then brush with a hard bristled broom as you can see here. For extra stubborn mold, apply a small amount of mold cleaning solution to your mixture and scrub with pressure. Make sure you follow the directions on the product's label. For the best results, you can use a high pressure gurney. Just make sure you're at least 30 centimeters away from the deck when spraying, or you could cause damage. Let's talk about board cracking. One of the main causes of cracked decking is the improper configuration of joists. If your joists are installed too far apart, there's not enough support and in time, this could lead to cracking. Another cause of cracking can be the configuration of the decking clips. These clips are important as they secure the boards to the subframe and help facilitate load bearing. If the clips are not spaced out correctly, there can be an unequal distribution of weight and that can lead to cracking. Decks without sufficient ventilation or that suffer from too much moisture due to lack of sunlight are also susceptible to cracking. On the flip side of that, a deck exposed too harshly to the sun may become dry and crack. Make sure you are choosing the right material based on your specific location and needs. Our titanium range is the strongest and most durable, so I highly recommend considering that as an option for your deck. View our installation guides and videos on our website to make sure you are installing correctly. If you're concerned about your decking configuration or plan on placing heavy objects, I recommend speaking to a qualified builder or structural engineer for expert advice before installation. All types of decking boards experience slight expansion and contraction from temperature changes. This is perfectly normal and expected. You need to keep in mind the temperature when you're installing and cutting your boards, as there will be slight changes in sizing across the day. For example, boards cut at 9am in the morning when it's cold will be slightly larger by 2pm when it's warm. There are a few important things you can do when installing to make sure your deck can handle this fluctuation. Firstly, you need to acclimate your materials on a level surface at least two days prior to installation on the job site. Acclimating the boards will assist in uneven shrinkage seen during and after installation. Next, you need to make sure the gap between the boards is big enough to allow the slight variation in size we recommend three to five millimeters. Any less and you'll risk damaging the boards if they expand from the heat. If your boards are over four meters, make sure you use the anti-creep clips. These clips keep the center of the board in place and help minimize expansion and contraction. The best way to allow for expansion and contraction is to use the breaker board method and carefully follow our installation guide on our website to make sure you are installing correctly it's very important to double check you are using the right amount of clips, materials, tools, spacing, and methods we clearly lay out in our guides and videos. If you're concerned about your decking configuration or what you should look out for specific to your unique needs, I recommend speaking to a qualified builder or structural engineer for expert advice. 
Bright Deck is much stronger and more durable than timber decking, but even with normal use and foot traffic, scratches may unfortunately occur. But you're in luck, because our decking can be repaired. You can use a wire brush gently across the surface in the direction of the grain, as shown here. If you have double-sided boards, a simple solution is turning the board over and using the other side. To avoid scratches in the future, make sure you use felt pads on your furniture to protect your deck. Thank you.